<clears throat> well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our fourth Sunday after Epiphany. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, as well as the Salish people, past and present, and honor with the gratitude and the land itself with the Duwamish and Salish tribes. Today's worship is morning prayer, and you can find the morning prayer bulletin in the description and also the readings and our music today. Let us take a moment to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. <clears throat> Okay, our opening song this morning is The Summons, found, found in your online worship booklet. <clears throat> Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Grace and peace from God, our Creator, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
May Almighty God have mercy upon us. <clears throat> Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now will be forever. Amen. The Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving Go into the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 71 verses one through six. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, and my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow to build, and to plant. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 
love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror, dimly. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And our song before the gospel is Open My Eyes, found in your online worship booklet. from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, do here in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath, in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elijah, Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of a hill 
on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I hope you all can hear me well this morning. My computer was being a little bit difficult this morning, so let me know if you can hear me well. <clears throat> Our scriptures this morning, um, I kind of want to call them a love sandwich because we have on either end of our scriptures, we have the call um, to Jeremiah, and then we have conflict in the New Testament. But in the middle, it's what ties it all together. Um, Paul's words about love being the most important thing. I'll begin briefly with the call. Jeremiah says, I am but a boy, which is similar to what many prophets um, and leaders in um, the Hebrew scriptures say. If you remember, Moses said, but I stutter. I, you can't call me. I can't be this leader. And God is always saying, yes, you, you can do anything that I call you to uh, through me. So through with God, we're sent to do more than we can imagine. I'm going to lean heavily on uh, our Bishop Curry in my sermon this morning. Bishop Curry says in um, a piece of work called Crazy Christians, A Call to Follow Jesus, being a Christian is not essentially about joining a church or being a nice person, but about following in the footsteps of Jesus, taking his teaching seriously, letting his spirit lead in our lives, and in so doing, helping change the world from our nightmare into God's dream. God's dream was there from the very beginning, and God was unfolding through us, through God's people, all of God's wishes for a community, um, a global community, really, of love. But the other part of the love sandwich that I was speaking about at the beginning this, this morning is the story of conflict in Nazareth when Jesus goes to his hometown. Now, some little details that I learned this week as I got into this rather difficult scripture. First of all, it's the only time that we hear this story in any of the Gospels. And it's important to know that um, even today, if you want to find a cliff in Nazareth, you have to go about two miles out of town. So I'd like to suggest that it's possible and likely that this um, story of them throwing Jesus off the cliff was really more of a figurative story, like they wanted to run him out of town rather than they were literally throwing him off the cliff since um, Nazareth isn't actually built on a cliff. Um, and in order to get to one, you'd need to go two miles out of town, which is kind of a long walking distance for running somebody out of town. So imagine that's figurative. And then we look into the story. What was it that made the people in Nazareth so angry? Jesus gives a hint at that, that they are demanding um, some signs similar to what he did in Capernaum. Now, uh, in this particular spot in the gospel, he hasn't done any miracles in Capernaum. So this is one of the things that helps us to understand how the gospels may tell some of the stories and may leave some of them out. Whatever the miracle was that he had already done in Capernaum, we don't know what it was, but they wanted him to do those kind of tricks for them. They wanted him basically to be their hometown hero who did whatever they asked him to do. And he's telling them, I'm going to be going other places. I have to go where the spirit of God within me is leading me. And they don't like that. They want to keep him as their own prize. They don't want to share him. And so they become angry. But he intends to go and share his vision uh, of love and of community and of welcome table with everyone he encounters. And so he leaves Nazareth to go on his uh, tour around the, the lake, uh, the Sea of Galilee, and to reach many people. Then we come to the beautiful words from Paul about love. Now, these words about love are often shared at weddings. In fact, Bishop Curry preached on this scripture when uh, the most recent royal wedding happened a few years ago. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. 
It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And then he goes on to say, for all of the good, for all of the good things like prophecies and knowledge and um, even miracles, they're nothing without love. And so Paul is, I believe, really inviting us to live into both call and conflict when they come up with a lens of love. Think about that for a minute, a lens of love. So in other words, whenever we open the Bible, um, Jackie Lewis has said, well, in what context does the Bible say this or that? And what does, and how does it make sense? And what is right? And then goes on to quote William Sloan Coffin Jr., who urges readers to rely on the integrity of love rather than our own limiting judgments, because we don't know nearly as much as God knows. William Sloan Coffin Jr. says it this way, those who prefer certainty to truth, those in church who put the purity of dogma ahead of the integrity of love, what a distortion of the gospel it is to have limited sympathies and unlimited certainties. When they reverse to have limited certainties, but unlimited sympathies, it is not only more tolerant, but far more Christian. For who has the mind of God? And didn't Paul also insist that if we fail in love, we fail in all other things? This is true not only for when we read the Bible, but for when we go and do anything. And so as we go out and into our lives and into our weeks, we're invited to do everything through a lens of love. To ask the question always, is that the loving thing to do? Is that what Jesus, the embodiment of love, would call me to do? And when we face uncertainties, to do it through the lens of love as well. This is a time of great uncertainty in our world. It's a great uncertainty both because of the pandemic, um, because perhaps uh, problems um, internationally. There's all kinds of uncertainties in our lives. Rather than holding on to the knowledge or the hope that we will know what will happen next, we can lean back on the comfort that God gives us a lens of love if we let the Holy Spirit guide us in, the way, in that way. And so whenever we go out and do anything, even if we're sitting at home and learning, we can ask ourselves, is what I'm doing patient? Is what I'm doing kind? Or is what I'm doing envious or boastful or arrogant or rude? Is what I'm doing insisting on my own way or irritable or resentful? Because love if we're living through the lens of love, hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things, bears all things, it never ends. This gift of love, this welcome table that Jesus invites us to, that he went out all around the Sea of Galilee to share, is one that we are invited into and we can walk, as Bishop Curry says, in his footsteps. <clears throat> At that royal wedding, when this scripture was read, Bishop Curry had said this, stop and imagine for a minute. Think and imagine. Now, I want you to think of that as a lens, a lens of love. Think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine our homes and families when love is the way. Imagine our neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Businesses and commerce when love is the way. Imagine this tired, tired old world when love is the way. When love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive, when love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. If love was the way, poverty would become history. If love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, 
we will lay our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. And love is a way. There's plenty of room for all of God's children. And love is the way we actually treat each other. Well, we treat each other like we're family. This last verse, this last piece of his writing, when love is the way we actually treat each other well, like we were family, brings into focus what's happening in Nazareth this morning. The people of Nazareth think they sort of own Jesus because he's family. But the family of God, God does not know the boundaries of a town. It doesn't know the boundaries of our own limited thinking or limited knowing. The family of God reaches out everywhere. And so whenever we find ourselves irritable, irritable or boastful or rude, we can ask the Holy Spirit to renew in us a lens of love so that we can follow in the footsteps of Jesus. <clears throat> and finally, I'll finish with another piece from Bishop Curry um, called Crazy Christians, a call to follow Jesus that I mentioned at the beginning because we are all called. <clears throat> Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. <clears throat> a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vaults of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. As we slowly prepare to enter into our new sanctuary, my prayer is that we will continue to become a sanctuary of love without walls, without barriers, without boundaries, and that we will share our sanctuary of love with all whom we encounter. Amen. We will continue our prayer this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. 
mercifully hear the supplications of your people and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sunday. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The colic for me. Oh, oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those whom we love and those who need God's love. Tammy asks for prayers for Karen and Deanna in their fights with cancer. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Jean lifts prayers of thanksgiving for the blessings of her family. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Tina asks for prayers that Jerry's spot of cancer will be safely removed and that it hasn't spread. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Nona asks for prayers for their neighbor's little girl who currently has COVID. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Linda asks for prayers for Linda O, for Stacy, for Laura, and for John. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Mary asks for prayers for Kurt's cousins in Germany who are grieving the passing of Carola. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer.
Judy asks for prayers for Pat's grandson, Camilo, in Connecticut. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. I think the abbreviation CT is Connecticut. I apologize. Bonnie lifts prayers for her mom who needed to go to the hospital this week. We lift prayers for a quick recovery. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Laura lifts prayers for her father-in-law, Larry, and their family. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Laura lifts prayers for her father-in-law, Larry, and their family. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We would like to invite people to, stay, to type their thanksgivings and blessings of this life. for the devotion and dedication of the educators in all the school districts who are working so hard. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Dixie is lifting prayers for Aunt Fran and her family as they mourn the passing of her son, Dave. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Bonnie is super grateful for all the folks who spent hundreds of hours working on the new building, making it stunningly beautiful. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Linda is thankful for signs of spring. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Catherine is thankful for family, friends, and kittens. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Mary is thankful that her sister Dorla realizes how much her adult children love her and help her. In your name, Lord, hear our prayer. Tina is thankful for her dad, who will be celebrating his birthday this week. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer.
Debbie is thankful for Bonnie and the wonderful worship team who work hard to bring this service live into our homes. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Dale expresses so much gratitude for the people God sent to help her through her recent surgery. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Laura is grateful for the opportunity to worship together with our loving neighbors at Shepherd of the Valley. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And we're thankful for the musical talents of Edelmar. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. lifting up all of our prayers those spoken and unspoken and those for which we have not yet found words we pray the, the prayer of St. Christopher Almighty God you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name you will be in the midst of them Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And after I give you the blessing, stick around for just a few announcements and prayers for those with um, birthdays and anniversaries. Blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love, both the living and the dead, this day, this night, and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. A reminder that today is our annual meeting at noon. That will be on Zoom. So check your links in your email so that you can come and join us. You'll hear news about the new building, uh, some of the new exciting things that we're doing, how we're doing financially, um, and um, some really exciting opportunities, um, including the possibility that we may have a school um, that would like to uh, rent our space if it works out. So we have several birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate. First, I have to find them. All right, here's our birthdays. Happy birthday to Mary Lopez, Lopez, Mary Boyce. And coming up soon, Alexi Plouet-Smith. We also have some wonderful anniversaries coming up. Most recently, Jerry and Judy Carwhite. May God bring blessings into your lives that you may be a blessing in the lives of those whom you meet. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. <clears throat> and our song to send us forth is O oh God Beyond All Praising, found in your online worship booklet, O oh God Beyond All Praising.
O God, beyond all praising, we worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs cannot repay. For we can only wonder at every gift you send, at blessings without number, and mercies without end. We lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word. We honor and adore you, our great and mighty Lord. Then hear, O oh gracious Savior, accept the love we bring, that we who know your favor may serve you as our King. And whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill, we'll triumph through our sorrows and rise to bless you still. To marvel at your beauty and glory in your ways and make a joyful duty or sacrifice of praise. Peace, everybody. We'll see you in the Zoom meeting very shortly. Blessings upon you and your house.